In 2016, a popular YouTuber and scuba diver started documenting his adventures recovering lost items from underwater. Well, in November, he specifically set out to find a car, a 1988 Pontiac Grand Am, thought to hold the answers to the missing persons case of Aaron Foster and Jeremy Bechtel, two Tennessee teenagers who vanished 21 years ago. The video of his search has now been seen over two million times on YouTube. And now he can say, I am the one who is finding answers for families desperate to heal. For over 20 years, police struggled to find the car of missing teens Aaron Foster and Jeremy Bechtel. Let's get the boat in the water. That was until Jeremy Sides decided to take a dive. He spent two days exploring murky lakes and frigid rivers. I've been looking all day. Before making a discovery that changed everything. If that's Aaron and Jeremy's car, then that's gonna be super huge. The license plate was a match. It was Aaron Foster's car. It's Aaron. He's coming home. Jeremy Sides joins us from his home in Georgia. Jeremy, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I got chills seeing that video when you say it's them. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. I want to start with you're a certified scuba diver for five years. It was a hobby. How did it turn into deciding, I'm going to dive to solve crimes? It just evolved. Like, over the years, I met lots of amazing people. And one of those people that I met um, essentially started this um, this thing where essentially we just go out and uh, hunt for cold cases. And he was doing amazing work. And uh, I learned from him and I figured, and as time went on, I was like, this, is, this feels like the right thing mm. to do with my time. Because it's one thing to make a video yeah. online for entertainment purposes, but it's a whole other thing to dedicate your time and your money into trying to bring uh, people the answers yeah. that they desperately need. I mean, you know, listen, I had that show Deadline Crime for several years, and I have a new show, Someone They Knew, all crime shows. So I know that that intimate part of wanting to help people solve these, but you've done it in this remarkable way. Now, you were looking through missing persons databases when you came across Aaron and Jeremy's story. You decided to investigate you spent two days searching and checked three different places. How did you decide on those places? The cases that jump out at me are the ones where somebody just up and vanishes without a trace, and there's no reason why. And they also disappear in their car. In this particular case, they lived in a town that has a big river that runs right through it. Wow. And once I find all those indicators, I decide, I was like, all right, I'm just going to go into town. I'm going to look around. I'm going to see what I can find. Wow. And uh, that's what I did. The first day, I hit all the surrounding lakes, and uh, I found a car, but it wasn't theirs. And then um, I went back about a week later, spent all day searching more bodies of water, and I ended uh, in the town where the river was. And within an hour in that river is what I went went right by, and I saw them. Well, that's, a, that's stunning to me. The car was 13 feet down. Why couldn't police find it before you? Well, for starters, the technology that I'm using, these, this sonar equipment, has only been around a few years. Um, ah. So when they, when they disappeared 20 years ago, uh, they just didn't have that. And from the very beginning of this case, uh, when they vanished, there were rumors immediately started spreading that they decided to just pack up and leave, go to Florida, start a better life, mm. or they were murdered, or there's all these stories started spreading around, very small town. And it immediately steered the investigation the wrong way. So nobody really even thought to look in the river thinking it was just a car accident. That's remarkable to me. Oh, it's, it's, it's incredible. Coming up, he didn't think the search would lead to any answers. Then the sheriff called Jeremy Bechtel's cousin will join us. The family's reaction to this big break in the case after the break. Home. Home. How you doing? First things first, brother. Oh yeah? <laughs> you don't understand how big this is. I told him that. I'm lost. I'm lost for words. I'm so sad that that's where they ended up. It's been over 20 years they've been sitting there waiting 
for someone to find him, and I'm, I'm glad I did. This is about getting them home, and we're gonna do that today. It's time. What an incredible story. Today, we've been asking the Tam fam, how would you end this sentence? I was the one who, we've been talking with Jeremy Sides, the scuba diver, who can now say, I was the one who cracked the cold case of Aaron Foster and Jeremy Bechtel, two Tennessee teenagers who disappeared over 20 years ago. We're joined now by Jeremy Bechtel's cousin, Stephen. Stephen, thank you for being here with us today. My okay. goodness. Um, what did you think had happened to your cousin? Uh, we didn't know what happened. Weeks turned into months, months turned into years, and it was hard to believe that Jeremy would just run off and leave his family like he did. You know, it, it was just really hard to come to our own conclusions and whatnot. What was it like for you when you got the call that they'd been found? Uh, that was hard too. I mean, I was, I was at work, uh, just so happened to be on a break when the sheriff called and it was just disbelief, really. I, I had to ask him three or four times if he was playing with me. I know that as you process this, you and your family are finally gonna be able to lay them to rest. As Jeremy Side said, they are home. You've been crowdfunding to cover the costs. Do you feel like there is some closure even as you process? Yeah, there's, there's closure, I mean, more so on the family side is we always held on to a, a hope that there would be a knock on the door or a, a phone call or something that, you know, and it would be Jeremy on at the door or on the other end of the phone. So, yeah, closure, but yeah. a, a loss of hope at the same time. Mm. Jeremy Size, I know that you said there's a community of scuba divers investigating cold cases and that it's a growing community um, that you're part of dedicated to bringing answers to families. I mean, what a life's work you have now. That's, this is incredible. It is super exciting. Within the last year, this has all happened. And like, I, besides the two missing teenagers that, you know, Aaron and Jeremy, not even a month prior, I found an 84 year old woman also in Tennessee, just an hour away. So I've learned successfully and the process is working. So we're doing the job right. And I think, I think it's a really good thing that we're all doing. Wow, bringing closure to them and that 84 year old woman. It, it is, it's amazing. I'll keep following you and keep watching um, all the work you're doing to help families heal in this unimaginable way. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Stephen. Our thoughts and prayers are with you and your family. Thank you.